Okay, quick video on the Broadman areas. Uh, nothing huge, nothing um, super awesome, no special ways to remember how to do them. Um, I just find it's really helpful to look at patterns, um, to try to find um, specific groups and flows to things. Uh, without doing that, I have a really, really hard time memorizing anything. Um, so basically with the Broadman areas, I tried to find um, a pattern or a flow um, in the numbers and where they move in the brain. Um, so we'll just get going. Um, I treated this almost like a connect the dots thing. So right in the center, you've got to kind of orientate yourself. Um, that's one, two, and three right there. Then we've got four, then five, six, seven, and then from here, it just continues moving on down. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and finally twelve. So when you kind of follow those around, first, I mean, just remember that as one big group. 1 through 12, that's the easiest way to do it. Worry about their functions after. So you've got 1, 2, 3, and then it bounces back and forth. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you remember that back and forth pattern right over top of 1, 2, 3. That's the easiest way for me to remember it. Um, there's 4, 5, you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It goes back and forth and it's real nice and easy to remember there. Then from 8 it just continues moving on down the frontal lobe. 9, 10, 11, and 12. So that first uh, chunk those first 12 numbers I found really easy to remember but then from there <clears throat> you've got these two random ones here you've got 28 and 34 um, just you have to remember those two different numbers just remember 28 is smaller therefore it sits a little bit lower than 34 from there we're gonna go over to the occipital lobe where you've got 17 18 and 19 um, it, when you look at it from the end I picture it looking like a bullseye like this. So you've got 17 there, 18, and 19. I'm not sure that's exactly how it looks, but that's how it's the easiest way for me to picture it, looking at it from the back like that. Um, 17, that's the date of my birthday in September, so obviously that's supposed to be the most important day of the year, the center of everybody's attention. So you've got the 17th in the center, and as you move further away from the 17th, things become less and less important. Um, that's how I remember 17, 18, 19. So I treat that as one group. To get the rest of the groups, we've got to move up to the exterior or, uh, or lateral view versus looking at it from, uh, from more on the inside. So we'll draw on these numbers real quick. One, two, three, and then we've got four. Remember, it just bounces back and forth. Five, six, I want to make sure six was in there. And then we've got seven, eight. So remember, again, we've got the little bit of flow. Actually, we'll show you after. And then this side, it only goes nine. 10 is kind of this whole area, so we'll just leave one right in the middle. And then we've got 11. 12, ex 12 is excluded here. So again, we've got that same bouncing back and forth pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then continuing 9, 10, 11. Real easy to remember those. Um, once again, we've got 17, 18, and 19, with 17 being the center of it all, and moving out from there. Um, next number up, we've got 22. I don't know how you want to remember that one, but once you once you, I write the the numbers in, it might become a little bit easy to, easier to remember. So 29, then we've got or 22. I'm sorry, then 39, then 40, then 41, then 43. Actually, this one belongs a little lower. 41, then 43, and then 44. So kind of going with the one, two, three, four, five, six method where you kind of connect the dots, that's how I found these ones easy. If I can just remember the starting point, 22, starting right here, and it creates a nice horseshoe um, in increasing numbers. So 22, 39, 40, 41, skip 42, 43, and 44. So it kind of creates this nice little loop, and then all you have to do is remember the the numbers that there are. So 22, again, sitting in its own thing. Then you've got 39, 40, 41, skip 42, and then 43 and 44. Um, that's how I remember that collection of numbers uh, versus uh, 1 through 12 or 1 through 11 from this lateral view. Then going over the functions of each of them, um, 1, 2, and 3. Stick with blue, I guess. 1, 2, and 3. Sitting up here, they work. They all work together. They're that uh, somesthetic cortex. Somesthetic, so they're like the the feel group. Um, 
I don't know if you ever spanked as a kid, but I remember it seems like pretty classic words. I'm going to give you to the count of three before you get this belt or before I'm, you know you're in big trouble. So what happens at the end of three? You've got one. Let's start over. You've got one, two, and if I get to three, what do you feel? You feel pain. So one, two, three is where you feel pain, vibration, all that kind of stuff. Um, so obviously when you think of what it gets, it's getting information from the thalamus um, because if you remember the tracks, most of those tracks stop in the thalamus, um, which means that it's having input from the gracilis, cuneatus, spinothalamic, all that kind of stuff are all eventually uh, getting to the somasthetic cortex. Um, then kind of the next group that I tend to look at is four, six, eight, and even though it's a little bit of a ways away, 44, because they all have a somewhat similar functions, so I find them easy to group together. Four is right next to this, uh, uh, let's see, I need a yellow. This one right here, I believe that is the central sulcus. Hopefully that's still within the recording box there. So that's a central sulcus. So number four is, it's the most important, um, or you know, as if there's a most important, but one of the more important um, air Broadman areas. So that's where you initiate things. So kind of going back to one of the tracks, it's easy to remember a forward thinking. This is the number four. So I like to think of that one as, actually that might not be in the field of recording. I like to think of that as forward movement um, or forward thinking, forward motion. So it's initiating movement. It's initiating mostly at the um, kind of the more important areas, the, the hands, the feet, and the mouth. Um, so then going back to what track that is, it's a lateral cortical spinal, um, which is also the ones that had the bed cells, the giant bed cells. Um, I think that's, I don't know, he made a point of noting that, so I wonder if that's going to be a question somewhere along the way. Um, I'm not going to go into every detail of each of these things, just some of the, the, some of the main things, so which lamina um, it deals with in the cortex. I'm not going to bother with that right now. So then six, um, it has a similar function. Um, it's motor initiation of the proximal extremities. So like your shoulders, I'm assuming is what that would be talking about. Proximal extremities. So four, we've got initiation um, of the distal. Six, we've got initiation of the proximal. Um, I like to think of that. Um, it's called the, uh, it's the pre-motor region. Um, pre-motor sounds like promoter, someone that promotes a fight, they, gets thing go they get things going. That's how I remember that one. Um, moving down to eight, like Dan had said, um, I don't know if any of you had thought of it before that, but when you take an eight and you flip it on its side, it looks like a set of glasses or eyes, because this is initiating the, um, a whole bunch of the motor movements of the eyes. So eight is dealing with eyes. Now, this is where we're going to go down here. 9, 10, 11, and 12. Everybody remembers that uh, ice pick lobotomy deal that Torgerud was talking about. So 9, 10, 11, 12 is kind of like your, your fluffy section. I, ha I made a little, or came up with just a little um, rhyme, I guess, to remember the 9, 10, 11, 12, but I feel stupid saying it. So you're going to have to go to the chart and uh, see how I remember this one. It goes 12, 11, 10, 9, but after that I feel stupid. So 9, 10, 11, and 12 deal with, it's kind of, I think of it as your fluffy part of your brain. Um, that's where your personality, your emotion, where all of that kind of comes out. Um, so that's that group. Um, from there we're going to go to 17, 18, and 19 because they are all nicely together here. Now 17, center of the bullseye. So that's where you actually see. That's where we see things. 18 and 19, they're kind of along the periphery. They still deal with vision, um, but they're not as important. So 17, 18, and 19, um, I have written that it's where you integrate um, visual storage, um, integrate and memory storage for visual sensations. Um, so this is where he was talking about having face blindness with a lesion, um, because you can still see, but you can't associate that with memory. Um, so it has input, um, I'm sorry, that's a different one, the face blindness, not face lesion, face blindness is called prosopagnosia. 
prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I think that's probably going to be one of the questions that he talks about. Uh, moving from there, we've got to go back over here to 22. Look where it is. It's pretty much in line. Um, uh, we'll put a little note on 44. Um, or we'll do that after, actually. So 22 is right at about the level of your ears. So that's your hearing memory. Hearing memory. Um, it's also called Wernicke's area. I don't have any special way to remember 22 as Wernicke's area. I'm still working on that one a little bit. Um, but that's, so 22, right in line with your ears, hearing memory function. Um, not necessarily where we hear, but hearing memory. So this is where if uh, there's a lesion at, uh, in this area, um, because it's hearing memory, they have a hard time associating sounds and words with specific meanings, I think is kind of how I remember it. So it's a different type of dysphagia. So they can still speak and pronounce just fine, but their sentences don't make sense because even though they know how to say words, they don't necessarily have the meaning connected with it. That's how I have it remembered in my head. Um, 22, we'll talk about 41 as well. Now look at the proximity here. 20, 22 and 41 are real close. They're associated together in his notebook. 41 is actually where we hear. So here, here. Um, it's also known, it's got this other name, Heschel's Gyrus. Some of these names I'm having a hard time remembering exactly which one they're associated with. So 41 and 22 are associated with each other. 22 is the, the hearing memory. 41 is the actual hearing portion. That's where things are, uh, are actually going on. Um, now going back to here, 28 and 34 deals with olfaction or smell, um, which makes a little bit of sense because they're not only um, fairly close to where the nose would be, right in here, maybe a little bit lower. Those would be somewhere down in here. So they're fairly close to that area, um, but they're more medial. Your nose is in the middle of your face. These are more medial in the brain. They're not way, they're not on the outside over here. Um, they're more in this medial view. So 28 and 34 both deal with olfaction. Um, I think the big thing there is that information from the, from the nose, uh, smell, the sense of smell, doesn't go to the thalamus first it goes directly from that olfaction bulb to these areas. Um, they have two different names. 28 is the parahippocampal and 34 is the uncus. Sounds like uncle, probably someone I'm going to have a little respect for, maybe they're above me. So therefore when I look at it here I can remember uncus is on top um, and then parahippocampal hippos pretty stinky. Maybe you can associate that somehow. Um, that seems to help me a little bit. Um, from those ones we'll go to this group up here. 5, 7, 39, and 40. Um, those are all kind of mixed together in his notes. 5, 7, remember those together, 39, and 40. Um, they all deal with kind of the same thing. Um, they all deal with synthesizing memory and sensation into creative functions like reading, writing, and language. Um, so just remember that they synthesize memory and sensation. They deal with reading, writing, and language. He makes a special note about 39 um, being on the angular gyrus. Um, and also that a lesion here. So if there's a lesion at 39, um, it's going to lead to an inability um, or a difficulty reading or writing. Um, I'm not sure if he said uh, complete inability or just partial. So inability to read, alexia, so if you have a hard time remember that. Dyslexia, we all know what that is. So alexia is the complete, I would think would be complete inability, but I'm not sure. Um, or it could lead to agraphia. Um, hieroglyphics is a f you know the writing that we all associate with um, historical writing so a graphia um, graphia meaning writing I'm assuming and a meaning without um, so that's five seven thirty nine and forty all kind of associated together which leaves one last one right here forty three and look at that it's at the bottom of this central gyrus which looks a little bit 
like a tongue 